Hi friends, Angie Hernandez, Certified Hypnotherapist, and today's that kid of mine Thursday. We love him, don't we? I am from the Indiana Hypnosis Center, and this is where don't let that bad habit be a habit of a lifetime. Get rid of that bad habit with hypnosis. Now, today is that kid of mine Thursday, as I said. Today I wanted to talk about the greatest gift you can give your child. And the greatest gift you can give your child is a set of healthy life habits. I always felt that was our job as parents, as my mother taught me, that our job as parents is to teach our children so they can be independent of us one day, live on their own, know what to do when adversity hits them. And that starts with a set of healthy habits. Now, things like uh, diet, exercise, how to manage your finances, all these things come into it. We know America is facing some challenges with kids. We've got childhood obesity on the rise. And so your input means a lot to kids. Here's just a few things that I think uh, are super important to have healthy habits. Number one, remember that your kids are always watching you. Even when you think they're not, they're observing your behavior, how you deal with things, and they're going to mimic you whether they like it or not. They're going to mimic you throughout most of their life. So be aware that they're watching and taking it all in. Um, make a list of healthy habits and try to work them in your everyday life. And that can be doing physical activities together. Your kids are probably strong enough to go out and play sports. Maybe you aren't uh, healthy enough to play sports with them, or maybe you, you, know, you have injuries to the place where you can't play the kind of sports they can. But you can go outdoors and be active with them. Walk, ride bikes, uh, go see things where you have to walk to it, stand with it, and go out together. And that way you'll all get exercise and teach them that being outdoors and doing things every day is just a part of what you do together. I know it gets kind of weird in the summer here where we are. We get a lot of mosquitoes and even ticks. And uh, I found a really great patch that you can put on f for mosquitoes that I, l I would love. I'm one of those people that's a mosquito magnet. So uh, that's the kind of product I would use. But be outdoors. I remember some of our best moments in our family were being at soccer games together, uh, going down to we lived our kids were young in Arizona and we go down to Sedona to Oak Creek be by the creek for the day picnic there we could play in the water and sit in the sun it was great those those are really great times or when we went to the beach so spend those happy memories and get some activity in at the same time all right number two limit the time spent playing on machines like video games and watching tv I'm a huge TV hound, I will admit it, but with kids, it's so important that they don't do this all day. That's hard, I know. They have phones, they have games, and it's pretty easy, especially in the car and everything else, to turn them over to games and watching something um, to try to keep your sanity. I totally get it. But all that screen time is just not super healthy, so make sure they have a break from that during the day. That outdoor time, that's a really good thing for them, almost no matter what weather. I don't have a problem with kind of having a camp out movie marathon once in a while with the kids, but they got some activity. Get that energy out. Have dinner together and make it a healthy dinner. Talk about foods. Now, we all have kind of different lifestyles. We all have different beliefs in foods. You might be vegetarian. Another person might not. Some I can't have gluten or dairy. so. You might have different ways of thinking about food. Whatever is the rule in your family, talk about it and teach them. Teach them that, you know, we eat dinner and then maybe we'll have some dessert. We don't have to have a whole bag of cookies, but we can have a, a small amount after our dinner's done. It's nice to have a dessert. It just doesn't have to, we don't have to go overboard with it. Uh, this one, a lot of parents, I think, disagree with me on this, but I'm going to say it. Set a bedtime and stick to it. Set a bedtime and stick to it. And bedtimes, it's for kids, of course. They need longer sleep to be healthy. And they need to be taught that sleep is so important. 
But you know the other side of that coin is when they go to bed on time, parents have wind down time. Parents have time where they can relax. Maybe they're spending it picking up here and there, but they have time to be together or have some wind down time as individuals. Uh, parents need it as much as kids do, but it, it is important to teach kids that a healthy amount of sleep is important. And I think a strict bedtime, and that doesn't mean 10 o'clock. <laughs> you know, when my kids were young, it was 8 o'clock. It was 8 o'clock almost up until high school for them. Now, I, I didn't mean they had to be in their bed with their eyes closed at 8. When they were small, yes. But at 8 o'clock, they had to go to their rooms. If they weren't quite sleepy yet, they could read a book or listen to some music. Now, we didn't have the option of having a computer for them then. That We just didn't have a home computer like that. They do now, and I would say that if I were raising a kid today, they'd need to be off their screens. Go to their room. They could do something like reading, writing, listening to music, doing art. But screen time is done. Screen time is really hard on sleep, even though some people would argue with me on that. I guess we each have our opinion, but science kind of backs up my opinion, so I'm going to go with it. Just be safe. Teach them what you feel is safety. How do we act around stray animals that might approach us, cats or dogs? Of course, when children are young, we're teaching them to look both ways before they cross the street. Um, there might be other things when they're a little older that you want to teach them. What happens when someone approaches you and tries to offer you drugs at school or somewhere else? It's going to happen. Let's face it, it's going to happen. So teach them what you think the appropriate or action should be. What if you don't know? What if you don't know the action? Get out there and find some help. Google what should I do when someone approaches my kids with drugs. See what the opinions are. Maybe talk to a police officer or a child psychologist, whoever you feel comfortable with. Get the answers and teach your kid because they're out there on their own a lot when they start getting older. They need something to fall back on. Um, you know, regular visits to the doctor. We do it when they're babies and teach them why it's important. How about praising good decisions? Let's not just, you know, harp on them. Sometimes I felt like I was doing that to my kids at the end of the day. I thought, gosh, I think I said no to every single thing they said today. I need to do better tomorrow. When they do something right, look for good things and praise what they do right. Good. That's how we do it. I like how you chose to do that. That's how our family does. Uh, that, was a, that was a good question today. I hadn't thought of that before. You know, praise good decisions. I'm not saying to overpraise. I'm not saying give them, give them a trophy every time they brush their teeth. No, you expect them to do those things. But uh, maybe go out of your way once a day to find something they did well or something they did without being told and say thanks. I appreciate that. I think that's a good thing. We all need to hear that. I like to hear that. Knowing that you're teaching your kids to be out on their own later in life can direct the way you teach them when they're young. And never forget that they're always watching. They learn by watching you. So if you have some bad habits that you don't want them to pick up, think about what you could do to change those bad habits. I'm here. Hypnosis helps you change bad habits. And I work with kids, too, if they have some problems that they need help with. Sometimes they do. All right. That's enough today for that Kid of Mine Thursday. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, join me tomorrow for Fear and Phobia Friday. And follow me if you can. Put me on your See First list at the top of the Facebook page so you don't miss any episodes. All right. This is Angie signing off. This episode's from me to you. Have healthy, happy families. Bye.